Hello everyone and welcome back to Space Engineers. Today I was going to reorganize this stuff because I don't like how this looks or feels at all and move the O2H2 container within this conduit there and do a few other bits and get further towards getting the base airtight and pressurized set of these airlocks and all of that stuff. But this morning I saw a tweet by Splitsy who does a lot of great content around Space Engineers on YouTube. And he was talking about an automatic minor script that was developed by RDAV. Uh, so what I wanted to do was to try and see if we can get that to work. I've already tried uh, a little, I spent a bit of time on it and I think that we can get it to work. So what that means is that we need to build a new ship. Um, do we, there are a couple of problems with this miner. Well, I guess the bigger problem is that if something goes wrong and it ends up blowing up, I don't really want to lose our main manual miner. Uh, I could just take a blueprint, project it again and make it again. But no. We'll make, we'll make one specific to this purpose, which is a little bit more comp, well, maybe a little bit more compact. We will only have one cargo container on it. Uh, otherwise we need to have so many thrusters on it. The script has a little check, which tries to ensure that you don't have any more than 15 thrusters. But since we are on a, we are not on inventory times 10, I don't, think we can carry one cargo container plus one or two drills worth of ore with just two or two thrusters in each direction because you can't have three because uh, you need one in each direction and six threes are 18 so that would still over 15 so we will disable that check when we build the ship as well uh, we will make this ship here and we will do it using We will do it use, instead of using a gear like we usually do. Oh yeah, there is another reason why we can't use that ship because that uses, ship uses batteries. When the auto miner comes back to dock at the base, it won't stay there long enough for it to recharge the batteries. So we need to use reactors to be able to power this. So let me just pick that toolbar and let's just set up a few things on here we need a we don't need a cockpit but we do need a medium cargo container which okay that's a large small we need the small conveyor sorter we need the ejector we don't need the spotlight we don't need the cockpit we do need a medium cargo container we do need I think gyroscopes are there, so we can use it from there. We need... Uh, what else? We've got medium cargo container, small conveyor tube, large, we don't need, we need a drill though. Small conveyor sorter, we do need, ejector, we don't need, spotlight, we don't need, but we do need a connector we need a remote control which can go there we need a sensor which can go there we need a programmable block but a connector there oh we need a small reactor as well we don't need to do that but let's get started and see how we do or did i just get rid of that rotor that we needed rotor r-o-t-o-r -O -O -R. let's pop that down there and weld off that and make that so get a motor large steel cheap put some of these things away so I can pick some of that up come on Okay, so that's that built and the next thing that we need to do is i need to pop a small rotor head on it 
So that's here, rotor, and add small head. And I'll just weld that up. Yeah, the small steel tube. Sorry, <laughs> small steel tube and steel plate. Don't need those. Okay, so let's try that. Perfect. So all we need to do now is put a few of those little blocks on top of it. Not sure why the music kicked in. Seems to do it now and again for a brief kind of amount of time and then it'll go away. It went away. Okay, so let's put the medium cargo container on top of that. So we'll just pop it right on top there. Oop, interior put. I knew I was missing something. I'll just pop a few of those away. So let's pop this over here. Yeah. So we will have one medium cargo container and we will have two drills. I did put some drills. Yep, yeah, six. And since it has a little mini port there, we can use that. And we will put the other one. It doesn't matter which side we put it on, but uh, actually, we need to put a small connector where is it I think it's there but we'll check that when we weld it up that goes there and the next thing we want to do is before I forget we'll pop a connector on this and I think the best way of doing that is like so and I have a feeling that will connect to the side for or will it? Nope, because I think on this side is the large port. Let me weld this up and then we can check it. Display construction component. Yeah, so we will have to move this connector to here which is okay too would that line up perfectly yeah yeah so that can uh, we can use that connector or this one and that will both be fine now we do need a couple of other things we need a we need a large conveyor connector because like something like that or do we we actually do not because what we need it for is to access a couple of these small conveyor ports but this one has small conveyor ports on all three sides might leave this one out there because that's fine but we could use this one for our nuclear reactor and part of the reason i used a rotor this time instead of a landing gear is so that this thing will be powered to start off with so that we can put the uranium into the nuclear reactor and I'll show you what I mean when we get to that point. So we can use that to put uranium, load uranium into the, oh we need to put the reactors as well. Did I have reactors somewhere? Small reactor. So We'll put three of these on here, I think. One, two, and three. 
So that tidies that up quite nicely. What else do we need? Uh, we need gyroscopes and so on and so forth. But I am just... Oh yeah, the big thing that we need is a conveyor sorter, which is that, a small conveyor sorter, which will help us get rid of the stone. And the way we're going to set that up is we are going to have that feed directly into a small conveyor junction which will go all the way along here like so to the edge of the sh oops that went the wrong place we could have one there as well actually eventually if we find that this many ejectors are not enough oops uh, five so I'm just not sure how far out this needs to come out but to check that I am going to put a block there put a block there and just bring that round to the end because this is going to be the the outside of this ship so that's exactly how wide the ship is going to be so we can now place one more conveyor conveyor junction there do I want one more no I'll not put one more there but what I can do is if I look at these ejectors, I'll put one ejector there. I just realized I should do the same thing on this side. So I should have these uh, on this side. I will have these blocks going exactly like so. Wait, and then we will have an ejector going this way. And we will have ejectors going this way. And because this is not right at the bottom of the ship, there should be enough clearance. Because the bottom of the ship, the bottom of the ship should be exactly where this miner stops mining, which would be if I can just get underneath here which would be so that I think is roughly where that finishes so the bottom of the ship would be one more down from that oops I can't place that easily like so so that would be the maximum clearance we have for the bottom of this ship because that much should get mined out by this drill because it mines one block down from its outer section so that's quite nice so we get down here so if we were to put these these ejectors right there we'll put one there just now it means that there are two blocks of okay two small blocks of clearance for the rocks to get kicked out and hopefully it won't do any damage to the ship while it gets kicked out and I will take this off because we don't need this here so let me just find the ejector again there we go so there we go so we have got one two three four five six seven times two fourteen fifteen sixteen stone ejectors the main reason for that is we don't want this ship to have to come back to base just because it filled up with stone. We're not that interested in collecting stone. Whatever stone we need, I can probably manually pick up from here. Or worst case, if we need a lot of stone, which I can't imagine why we would, I can use this miner and do it manually. So now that we've got all of these bits in here, and we see that there is actually a good chunk of extra space that we can use for whatever else. I mean, we could pop another cargo container here, but then that is just so much more weight and so many more thrusters that we would need. So we'll try and get this working with just one cargo container, and then we'll work out the rest later. But, so let's put in the other things that we need. I wonder if we should put in the thrusters first. Yeah, let's put in some thrusters.
which I don't seem to have on any toolbar. So ion thrusters and we will we need oops, up and down so that can be up and we need down oops and I wonder if there is a nicer way of placing that because we have space all over here. I guess the front and back really needs to go on the top of this. Uh, I mean, they could go here actually. The front and backs. Left and right, so okay. Left and right almost certainly need to go on the top, but actually I could put left and right here and they can be nicely in the inside of this ship. So let's do that actually. So I want it out so it sticks out and I wonder if I should put the other one on this side so yeah that might look quite nice I'm just going to put a few blocks oops over here so that I can mount it on that where is it okay so I can just pop it right on to there I uh, so that takes care of left and right. What I should actually do is attach it to this section here so I can weld this off so that these two sections, the left and right side of the ship doesn't have to be connected. Well, not through there. We'll figure out the Press the stuff for how we put armor blocks in later. Right now, I just want access to this area in case we need to put things in there, and we do need to put things in there. So we've got left and right, and we could do oh, two won't be enough, will they? That's what we decided. We need more than two. So let's do four, three. Yep, four fits there. Actually, I wonder if we'll need four because how many does this ship have? Oh, I think we've got plenty here, don't we? We've got one, two, three, we've got six there. Hmm, six for four cargo containers. What is it more than six? We've got one, two, three, four, five, so oh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, we've got twelve breaking. Yeah, that's a lot. One, two, three. I think it's mainly six that we've got here. Is that incomplete? Oh. Maybe we knocked it against something. We'll put down four. One, two, three, four. Better to have a one too many than one too few for sure. But I'm, I am realizing though, okay, four there is fine. Four for the front and back should actually, oh no, that's one. Huh. Huh. Okay, so one there, two there, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So one goes there, one goes there, and for the reverse, we will do the exact, can we do the exact opposite? Yep, we can. One can go there, and one can go there, 
and the same thing over here. Oops, not there. Right there, and there. Okay, so that's left and right, front and back. So all we need to now sort out is up and down. And I think ups and downs can go in there. But if we're talking about four of them, I'm just thinking about the best way of setting them in. Yeah, okay, so what we can do is we can have one like we can have that sticking out, that's okay. Two. And then we'll have two on top of that. Oh, I need to plate. That is easier to solve. And then we will pop the fourth one there. And for the up thrusters, or the thrusters facing down, we will put them right there, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's all the thrusters in place. So now we have the little things, like we need a, we need a few gyroscopes. So we can do one, two, three, and four, that should be enough. And we need a programmable block for the script itself. And oh, that can go, oh, that's fine. That can go there. We need uh, an antenna so we can access this. We need an antenna and we need a remote control. So the antenna oh the antenna we will pop here and the remote control I will pop onto the front. And I would like to pop it right up on top there. I think. Never really sure how this is supposed to go on. Is it like that? Or is it like that? Okay. I think. That might be the bulk of this ship. Okay, let me weld all of that up and I shall be right back. Okay, so I think that's all of that stuff welded up. Yeah, it looks like it's all welded up. A couple of things that we do need to sort out though is we need to give it some uranium so it can power up. You can see both those. Oh, I might have missed one reactor I did. I'll weld that reactor up as well. Uh, but you can see these nuclear reactors are red, so it has no uranium. So let's pick up some uranium. So let's pick up maybe. Be fine, and I will pop it into. Where are we? So let's just let me just find a cargo. There we go. I'll just pop that into there. Huh. There we go. So they should turn green now. There we go. There is one other thing that I forgot, which is that I need a sensor in here. So let me place that somewhere. I mean, it doesn't really matter where it goes, it just needs to be there. 
So I will weld up that sensor and the nuclear reactor that I forgot about and I'll be right back. Okay, yep, and you can see that that nuclear reactor has come on as well. I wonder if I should plonk one more on. Just so, because that's four times six, that's at least 24 thrusters. Yeah, maybe we should put one more on there. Particularly when it's full, we don't want it to have to run out. So let me just so, steel plate, metal grid. Not sure what else it needs. Let's let me. Oops. We can just put that right on there. should power up in a second there we are so I think that's all we need for this ship to technically function uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to I mean we can I can put a few blocks on here make it a, look a little less ugly which I can and I very well might do why is there an ejector sitting right there? I'll just put some of these things away. Uh, that makes no sense. Maybe that was supposed... Is was that supposed to be a connector? Nope. Nope. Maybe it was just misplaced. Yeah. Because that's looking about right. Yeah. That's looking great. We need to configure some of these things actually. So let me start off by doing that before I forget. So, okay, so since this is connected to the base, it's showing me everything. So maybe we will configure it after we've disconnected it. We just, so the reason I connected it to the base using a rotor was so that when I put the uranium into that cargo container, these uh, reactors were able to pick them up. If it was gonna, if 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 it was not connected to the base, I would have had to pop a temporary reactor on there and shove some uranium in it, just so that the grid was powered. Now that the grid is powered and everything is hunky dory, I hope. Let me just check. Yeah, plenty of uranium in there. Let me just take this off. We don't need that anymore. And I can go in there into the control panel and we have one sorter so we need to change that to drain all whitelist and stone because we wanted to throw out all the stone and we will take the ejectors I've got a whole bunch of them I will just create a group uh, I don't think I will actually need it but just to make it convenient and we'll just switch throw out on Now the only issue with it is that if it mines a lot of ore and it is still throwing stone out by the time it gets to the base, that stone could hit the base and could do some real damage. But hopefully by the time it gets back, all the stone will already be out. I mean, there are a lot of ejectors. It should clear it. I mean, the problem here is when the stone falls out of that, that might hit that. Actually, that is a very valid concern. I'm gonna take that ejector off. Just want to make sure that this thruster doesn't just fall off when I do that. So let me do that. Weld that up. Take that ejector off. Oh, I forgot about that guy. So I need to put another block there. Actually, I could just put the thruster on there, but I will maintain the previous. Uh, way of doing it. Oh God, where are my thrusters? Oh, there it is. So, put them up 
place. There we go. Huh. Not sure. But okay, we'll just leave it there for now. I'll do the same thing here. Now that thruster isn't actually connected to anything and it's not easy to connect that to anything. But this one we can. Yep. That works there. And I'll take that off, take that off, put one there, and put the thruster on the top. Just weld that up. Yeah, that looks okay. Is there anything else that we need to correct or adjust? Hmm. Maybe not. That looks kind of decent. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to pick up the script for the AI auto miner. Unfortunately, that script is uh, a part of a blueprint, which means that I need to start putting that, well, there are a couple of sections of it I need to build before I can get access to that code. So projector, I'll just plonk a projector down here. Like so. Just pick up a couple of large steel tube and finish welding it. Just need two. There we go. And I can access it also from here. Projector and blueprints. This is the RDAF's AI auto miner script. It's going to give OK there. And let's see what that has done. Yep. Oh, it's right in the face of that shit. Okay, let me move this guy out of the way. Gonna take him up. Oops. I just need him out of the way for now so that I can build a few of these bits. Oops, okay, I just need to get out. And it's just this bit that we need, which is the um, the programmable block. And I can get there by doing that. Oh, I need a interior plate. I thought I had some. Not very many. Just enough to do that, that, and then I can build the rest of this. So, one display and a couple of large steel tube. That's easily enough done. One display and two. That's just right click and drag picked up five by accident to specify how many you want and where is the front of this there we go let's go in there edit select the whole thing Control c to copy uh, let me just close that don't need that anymore so let's come in here and let us pop that into there Control a to select all Control v to paste remember and exit and here we go. Oh, large amount of thrusters detected. Program terminated to prevent performance issues, remove unnecessary thrusters, and press recompile. So that's where it says that the 15 is the maximum number of thrusters, which is just just not going to work for us because we, we can't move the ship unless we use large thrusters and they are so unwieldy. There is no way that we can, uh, there's no easy way to set that up. Now, I was in here earlier and the light number is wrong but it is in here somewhere and here we go stored subcategory permanent assignments uh, uh, and here's the section that we need to change so I think it's thrust count override and we can just change that to false remember and exit there we go so now it is happy even though 
it thinks that we probably have too many thrusters. So what we need to do now is connect it to a connector, which means that we actually need to build one. And that's on the bottom. Actually, we might not. I wonder if I should let it uh, just use this one. Hmm. I don't want it to actually have to go through all of that stuff to get there. Let me just get rid of this as well while I'm here. Put some of these things away before it drops everything on the floor. Just get rid of that. And I'll just get rid of that and all of this as well. Tidy base. So what we will do now is Huh. We will extend it out from here and we will put in a conveyor junction there. And then what we will do is we will put in a couple more because I don't want it directly. Oh, I need some more interior plate. So we, I don't want it directly inside that section just because, well, I don't want it blowing things up by accident because that would suck. So actually the last one, instead of that, I will use, I will carve it up and I will put a connector on top of that, uh, oh, mine, and like so, oh, I need steel plate, always needing something, uh, okay, so let me put this down. And let me weld all of that stuff up. It's gonna be a little tall, or oh, same height as those. Okay, let me weld all that stuff up and I'll be right back. There we go, so that's that connector set up. Now, this thing wants us to connect. So what I will do is, just to make life easier for myself, I am going to pick up a cockpit and plonk it on there. I could use the, uh, if I, hmm, yeah, if I really wanted to, I could have used the, uh, the remote control, but that is a pain. So I will just do it this way. So that basically involves plonking a, wait, just make sure I pop it down the right way. That's all we need. Get in. And let me go and. Uh, that looks structurally very weak, doesn't it? Totally feels like bits of it are gonna fly off in a very easily. So, okay, so we can't really see the connector here, but that's okay. We can probably figure it out. There we go, connected. So we can now hop out of that and probably if I can just get rid of all of these things. And before I forget, oops, okay. Let me park this back down. Oh, that ship moves pretty slowly. Just park this. All right. Oops. 
that's not prepped. Okay, I forgot that this one, I set up the connector to not have any, I disabled it. So let me just increase it a little bit. I don't know how much it needed. Let me check what it is for one of the other ones. Connector, what's the connector strength? 0.015%. Huh, interesting. I. Connector 2. 0.015 that's control and left click by the way so let's go forward let's come back let's hope it picks it up this time are we just out of the way there we go connected right so what were we doing yeah take this off and that is nice and connected. Let us check a couple of things here. First things first, let's check the antenna and get it to show the ship name. Five kilometers should be fine. And let us check the programmable block or PB or minor. I also want to name this. Let's call this, hmm, we'll call it an ant, although it's not actually that small. You know, just thinking more like a hive colony, that kind of stuff. So we need to now paste valid GPS location and custom data. So to do that, let us go to a nearby asteroid, I think, that one is relatively near. Where is it? Um, I think that one is there, yeah. So let me just head over there. And the, the GPS marker that we're going to place needs to be about 30, 40 meters away from the surface of the asteroid. Uh, I think uh, part of that is just the way the vanilla autopilot stuff works. I've tried putting it a little bit further away, like a couple of hundred meters, and it just got to that location and just hung around. So clearly a couple of hundred meters is too far. If it's too close, I think it'll probably, it might run into the rock. That hasn't happened to me yet, but I don't really want it to either. Um, so we will try and aim to get it about 30 or 40 meters away from the surface. Once we've got that placed, we can go back and we can give it the GPS coordinates and we'll chase it all the way back out here and see what it does. Now, since there isn't an easy way to know when you're 20 or 30 meters away that I know of, I'm just going to go down to here, which happens to be on the surface or pretty close to it. Oh, that's actually on the inside. What is it? Yeah, okay. So I'll just come out here a little bit. Let's say, yeah. And I will create a GPS marker here. View from current position, that's that one. And then auto miner number one. I'll copy that to the clipboard and then we'll head back to base, which is there. And we will give it, we will set this GPS coordinate up in the auto miner. And actually, before I do that, I want to blueprint that ship. Just in case something goes wrong with it, I can rebuild it with relative ease. Hopefully nothing will go wrong, but you know. No guarantees, right? So 
Yeah, I will blueprint it, then pop the GPS coordinate in, and then we'll chase it down and see what it does. Looks like this episode might end up being longer than usual, but I do want to see how far this thing gets to. Okay. There's a lot of beacons and stuff hanging about there. Okay, so to be able to do that, I need to disconnect this first. So let me just remote X. Hold on. Why does that say? Okay, 26 days of power. Oops. Oops, other way. P -P. Oh, clearly the remote control is upside down. Oh, right, I'm getting confused because I thought that this was a side connector, but it's clearly not. So the remote control is upside down. I want to fix that. And I also want to blueprint it. Wait. Okay, and mark one is there. Oh, why did I blueprint it? I need to, let me just go in there and delete that because I want to turn the thingamy upside down or turn it the right way around, I should say, because this is upside down, which makes sense. Uh, where did, okay, so put that, oops. Is that maybe the right way around? I'm gonna try it to make sure that it is absolutely the right way around. I'm gonna to go to Ant Mark, okay, remote access control. Okay, that's not quite what I want. I want to. Do. Oh, I just realized if I want to, if I want to make sure it's going the right way, I need to look at it from the right direction. So go back in there, take control, up, down, left, right, front, back. Yeah, perfect. So now uh, I will blueprint it. Look at that blueprint. So the ant is now blueprinted, perfect. So now I will go into, I won't do it from there. I will go into remote access, terminal, uh, auto miner, go into custom data, and just in here, oops, I'm going to put in that GPS coordinate, give okay. Oh. I need to recompile. Okay, let me just fix this. Let me, okay, so it doesn't have that, that's fine. So I need to park this again, but this time I might actually do it from the remote control. Control, okay, this way, come down. There we go, parked. It was easier than I expected. So now let's see what the programmable block is saying. Please paste valid GPS. Fine. Valid GPS being placed. Control V. OK. And off she goes. The drills are on. Oh, there were a couple of other things that I wanted to do. One of the things that I wanted to do was set it up so that Tim will pick up and place a certain amount of uranium in the in the nuclear reactors whenever that ship is parked, which is actually quite important. Hold on, where is? Otherwise, it will eventually run out of uranium, which won't be good. But we are way faster than that ship. So I'm just going to head over to the asteroid and we'll wait for the ship to come over and yeah so i wanted to set up the nuclear reactors the reactors on the ship all of them to pick up a certain amount of uranium so that whenever it docks tim will push up the uranium that it needs i tried izzy's uh, auto 
or the refueling script, I think it's called. But that didn't work. I think it was having an argument with Tim as to where the uranium should be, and it just ended up not really working. But we don't need anything like that. We just need Tim to transfer a certain amount, a set amount, whenever it docks. So since we've got like four reactors, we could actually fill them right up and it won't really matter. So I don't think it'll take up that much space. So this is the auto mining location. We are about a couple hundred meters from there. So we are on the other side and we should be able to see, yeah, the ant coming along. It's a few hundred meters away. Do we have access to it yet? Nope. Five hundred meters. Two hundred. Okay, let's see what happens when it gets over here. Okay, so I can get to the terminal now. Small reactor. One. Ten uranium. Let's say fifty. We will need to test this when it gets back to the base because Tim won't fix it as it stands here. But that's all of them set up. Let's see what's going on. I can actually check from just here. Go to the terminal and go to the auto miner and see what it is saying. So has finished tunnel false. So status is mining. So it has started the mining. And let's see how it does. Now I have a feeling this is just gonna go straight through rock as it stands. Might not pick up anything useful, but that's okay. Let's wait and see. Let's see actually, is there anything else here? Silicon, okay, so it might pick up a little bit of silicon. Let me check remote access, terminal, inventory, let me just stone. Yep, it's all stone right now. At least the stone ejection is working. <laughs> a lot of stone just getting chucked out of that. I'm surprised it didn't pick up any. Let's just see again. Did it not pick up any silicon? No, I guess not. Only picked up stone. Well, just while I am here, I will double check that the sorter is set uh, to whitelist stone. Yes. I wish there was an easy way to... Did it get to anything other than stone yet? I don't think so. <laughs> That's amazing. I could totally have set this thing up and just pointed it in the direction I wanted it to go. Oh no, I put it. I was just thinking that I could have used this to mine that hole through the asteroid that the base is on. But there is no guarantee as to which direction this mines out. At least not as far as I know. I wonder how far this will have to mine before it gets to anything relevant. Do I see some iron? Yep, I'm seeing some iron now. So let's check if there is iron in here. Oops, I need to go and inventory. It's definitely got some iron and it seems to be retaining the iron it's still going so it's cut through to the center of the asteroid which is a massive hole and it's keeping on going must have detected that it is just the inside of the asteroid and it hasn't come out of it the sensor must give it enough range to detect that. 
That's amazing. And I'll just double check how much Stornet has managed to kick out. Oops. Hold on. Yep. It's still throwing stone out from what I can see. Yep. I can see it actually happening right here. Hold on. How come? The stone is only coming out from a couple of them. Did I mess up the connections? Oh, you know, because there is only one conveyor sorter, maybe that's all the stone it can process. That would suck. So if that is the case, then what I need to do is I need to make that into a conveyor junction or just a regular conveyor tube. And I need to make, uh, if I make all of them conveyor sorters, then I can't have them popping out down below. But maybe that's okay. But that's a bit of an issue that we can work on in the next episode while we prettify this ship and sort through any other details. What I'm curious about now is whether this will go back to base and there is one way that I can ask it to do that. If I go into remote access, go into the terminal and if I go into the miner, I can give it a command. I can say F I N for finish, run, and it should be, it should think about going back home. Yep, see it's reversing out. So, so I do this before it, uh, oh, okay, so that is the problem with the stone ejectors being in the back. Hopefully it doesn't do any damage. The way it works its way out is it just reverses in exactly the same way it came in. Fortunately, it's not going very fast. Yeah, so I need to figure out, I might have to figure out another way to get rid of all of that stone. Because look at all that stone. Well, it's not too far actually, but there is enough of it just hanging about here. It's a good reason to have a good chunk of uh, armor just protecting this. I mean, it's not going fast enough to do any real damage, I don't think. Oh, it lines it up. I think it does. That's pretty cool. Let me just check how much iron did it pick up. Twenty-seven. 16, 27 plus 16, that's 37, 43, 52, ah, 52 K, 52,000 stone, that's not bad. I mean, considering that most of the work it did was just to dig out that stone. Okay, so it's made its way back. One bug that I have found, or one issue that I have found is that this one won't, it will reset its current mining status when you load the game. So as it stands right now, it makes some sense to ask it to head back to base before, before we save the game and exit. It's a little green thing. So there we go, that's heading back to base. Beautiful, I'm very pleased with that actually. Very impressed actually, more than pleased. Once we are back in base, we will need to set up an antenna so that we can access this ship from the base when let's say we are five, 10 minutes away from finishing an episode and ask it to get back home so that it'll be back home and parked before before we finish the episode. I guess 
I will also have to, oh, I won't have to set it up because I will have the GPS coordinates with me so I can just paste it in at the start of an episode and send it off. If this thing works, then we might need to expand our storage bay, expand our cargo bay, because we're going to get a lot more ore than I had originally anticipated. All right, let's get back here. I'm just gonna hop on somewhere over here and let's have a look. Can I see it? Yeah, so it's getting closer, 300 bit kilometers. Just delete these, um, these GPS markers we were using to just get an idea of where we were inside the base when we were building out. Don't need them anymore, just hide some of these other GPS signals so we can see this little guy flying right in. Is it rotating? Seems to be rotating kind of weirdly. But all right, cool, cool, cool. How does okay and park? Well, oh, very nice. I am so well impressed. I am so impressed. All right, I don't want it to go flying off again, so let me just uh, oops. Uh, control. No, that's not what I want. I want to go into terminal. Auto miner. And I'll just switch that off. Yeah. Very nice. Very good job. So let's look at those small reactors. And let me just go in here. So uh, let's actually. Tim. Uranium 50. Well, that's only 5.2. That is disappointing. Why might that be? That is connected directly to that. It is parked, right? Yeah, it is parked. Let's check. So let's go into terminal. Let's go into tin uranium. And in here, let's go into uranium. And let's pick some up. Yeah. What? Oh, I see. Okay, so I think what's happened here is uh, we, since we haven't set a number for either of these small reactors in our base, it's just gone ahead and picked everything up. So what's happened here is whatever is spare has been distributed across there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a limit for how much uranium is going to go into those. So reactor. So I will call this base reactor one. Tim uranium how much do you think 50 I think 50 should be enough and I will do the same thing for this one except this will be 2 10 uranium 50 will that be enough let's see how that does yeah so now they all have 50 Storm inbound. and I will go in to check the go in here and let's check the power situation. It's nine days, five days, okay, three days. <laughs> That's like Microsoft uh, estimate of how long something will take to complete, but this is totally fine. Several days of power. We can totally live with that. And I will also check, uh, I wanna replenish my, oh, uh, okay, so I need to fix this as well, the ice. 
is this whole container, the O2H2 generator is filled up with ice. So I can't even put my bottles in there. So let me just O2H2 generator and we will use Tim here again. Tim ice, let's say 25K. This is gonna be more than enough. 25,000, plenty of space left. I'll just get all of that replenished and you'll see that it's gone back up to 25K because Tim has updated it again. So that's that. And I also want to check the ore containers. No, the ingot container has uranium. We have 398 uranium. That's great. So it really doesn't seem that much, does it? Huh. That's crazy. Did we process all of the uranium already? Looks like we processed most of the things. So we've got some silicon and a bit of stone. And as far as the ingots are concerned, we are almost out of iron. And we don't have a lot of uranium, only 698. So maybe it's a good thing that we built this auto miner because in the next episode, we'll send it off to mine some, we'll actually send it off to mine some uranium because we do have some uranium nearby. That'll take a little bit of time, but we'll just let it do that. Okay, let me just check. Yeah, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I think that's all we have in this episode, but the next episode should also be interesting. We'll do a few more things. I wanna tidy this up. I want to put on a few more blocks, make it a little prettier and send it off to mine a bunch of that uranium and whatever else that we need. Well, that's been a very exciting episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.